Hey everybody, this is Professor Klein back in the Human Anatomy Lab at Ohana University. Today I want to bring you a video on the shoulder rotator cuff muscles. Let's begin. And these muscles would be on the skeleton right about here. We're looking at the posterior scapula. We're looking at the humerus. And you can see a little bit of the clavicle, or actually a lot of the clavicle on the anterior side as it would come over. If I move this out of the way, I've taped these muscles onto the skeleton for you. And you can see three out of the four rotator cuff muscles. Well, what can you see? First off, clear a little space here. We've got the supraspinatus supraspinatus right here that would be like this muscle taped on the skeleton in orange then we've got the infraspinatus right here that one's yellow and finally tucked underneath the infraspinatus is the teres minor the teres minor blends in with the infraspinatus but it is its own muscle those all insert way over here on what's called the greater tubercle of the humerus what's the greater tubercle well i've taped them again on this model and you can see orange yellow blue coming into a bony landmark called the greater tubercle what is that though let's just look at it on an actual bone and you can see it's a big bump right here there's a small bump on the front the head of the humerus over here, but it's on the most lateral side of the humerus. And that's the greater tubercle, big spot for those to attach to. Let's flip it over though and see the subscapularis. So if I flip this one over too, we're gonna see the subscapularis, which is a muscle on the anterior side of the scapula, like this black piece of tape. So this one's gonna attach to that lesser tubercle, lesser tubercle here. Let me grab the right sided humerus and now we can see that lesser tubercle, which is where the subscapularis would attach to. But what do these do in the body? Well, first off, all of them are going to hold the humerus into the scapula. Let's imagine supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, and subscapularis contracting all at the same time, and they're gonna pull this humerus inward like this. Now, if I look at it on this model, see how if I pull the other way and I pull out, so it stretches those muscles. So when they contract, they're going to pull in, pull in like that and hold your humerus close to the scapula. You can do that if you squeeze your shoulder real tight, ah, like that, you'll feel your shoulder tense up and stabilize. But each one has its own action as well. So if we come back up to this skeleton and I pull on some of these muscles, you can see the action of the muscle. So I'll let it rest here. I'm gonna pull on the supraspinatus. And when I pull on the supraspinatus, see what happens? I'm gonna pull right now. And right now, it's going to abduct the shoulder just a little bit though, only about the first 15 to 30 degrees. It's a small muscle, it doesn't abduct that much. However, you can see here, the infraspinatus and teres minor. Let me go ahead and externally rotate. You guys seeing that here? Let me turn it this way. I'm gonna externally rotate, which means I'm gonna take that greater tubercle and I'm gonna take it posterior. Watch that greater tubercle one last time. External rotation for these two. They're pulling this direction. So what would the last one do? And we got to go over here and look at it. 
the subscapularis. Well, the subscapularis is going to do the opposite of what we just saw. Subscapularis is going to internally rotate. Internally rotate like this. So imagine me pulling, pulling on this black tape and watch that greater tubercle, which is way over here. It's going to rotate anteriorly when you internally rotate. And this has been your video on the rotator cuff muscles. Thanks for watching.